everyone, Ian here at Able City in Burbank. Today I am going to check out post workflow for raw files captured by the Canon C200. There's a couple different ways that we could work with those raw files. We could uh, download the free software from Canon and process them through their raw developer or we could put them directly into DaVinci Resolve. However, what I want to do is uh, use both programs and see how they can complement one another and then show how to do a workflow with just one of those programs. Either way, you're going to get spectacular results from this great camera. All right, I've got my drive here. If I open it up, I have a folder. I offloaded using Shotput, and here are my raw files under Reel. There are three CRMs, so three clips in the Canon RAW format from the C200. I'm going to go in and use the Canon software first, the C Cinema RAW development software. And I'm going to go in and select my clips. And there they are. I could look at them as a list or I could look at them as a thumbnail. And notice in thumbnail, it tells me instantly that I do in fact have raw files. Double click and brings it into the uh, viewer here. And this is what is going to distinguish uh, the raw, cinema raw development software from say Resolve uh, or other programs. Because in this, I can work with them in the traditional uh, way that I work with raw files, meaning that my white balance and my gain can be changed. Right now, the viewer is showing me uh, the cine gamut in Canon Log 3. It's also showing me the white balance as it was shot. So the shooting settings are noted here and notice that the 5200K is grayed out. My slider is not active. If I wanna change that, well, let's go ahead and look at it in Rec 709 just so we can have a, an impression of what uh, it would look like in broadcast. So there it is. And if I go in here and change this to color temperature, now I can go in here and I could just move this around and see you know, if there's a color temperature I like a little more. This is looking pretty good. I think I'm gonna keep it here. The other option is I could go in with a um, Select this and now I could go in and click here and now I could go in and click for a white balance. But I like what I've got here, so I'm gonna keep it that way. If I wanted to gain up on this, I could do it here. And again, that gain is going to be carried through, uh, through to my output. Now, I like the way that I shot this at the native ISO of the camera. I like the exposure I got. So I'm gonna hit this default or restore button and it's gonna zero that out. I'm not gonna do any shift because I don't need to attend to lights that maybe had some green in them. Uh, and I'm not gonna add any sharpness. What I am gonna do is go back and change my uh, gamma and gamut so that I have the widest range. Uh, there I've got uh, my nice uh, you know, log image. So last step in this process, I'm going to go in here, go to preferences. I'm going to uh, use the same clip name as the raw file. I'm gonna set a destination. So I'm gonna go to my desktop, create a new folder, and I'll call this raw output. Okay, there it goes. Great and I'm going to output full quality. I'm not gonna do a proxy and I'm not going to uh, offload these in the CRM uh, file structure as would be uh, the situation here. What I am gonna do is go to my next one, my next tab here, and I'm gonna describe how I want these to be output. I want them to be 10-bit DPX, but you can see you've got a variety of choices here. And I wanna be in 4K I could crop, I could change resolution, and I could change uh, the attributes outgoing here, but I'm gonna keep them the same. This uh, third tab is for proxies. I'm not gonna do that, but as you can see, you've got a very wide range of uh, choices there. So all this is good. I'm gonna select okay. That sets all those attributes in place. Last step really is just to add this highlighted shot to the queue 
And there it is. There's clip number nine, clip number nine. Great. So now at this point, I just highlight the shot. Uh, there it is. It's active. And now I'm going to hit export. And now you can see uh, down here at the very bottom, it's going to show you uh, an elapsed time uh, and the progress percentage. Keep in mind, the rate at which these are exported is really dependent on uh, the speed of your system. So there's no hard and fast answers on this one. Uh, it's simply going to be a, uh, a variation on uh, how your system is set up. As you can see, I have finished my offload. It says OK. So let's hide the program. And there is my raw output folder. Let's open that up. And if I go in there, there are my DPXs. So I'm all set to now take these into Resolve. I've opened up Resolve because now I'm going to take a look at that footage that I just took out of development. And here we go. Raw output, that's what I want. Bring it in here. All right, and there's my shot. And as you can see, it's a 4096 by 2160, and it is a DPX. And there we go. Okay, so I'm going to select this and I'm going to put it on a new timeline. Great. Okay, so we have it here and we have uh, baked in our white balance and we have baked in our ISO. So I'm gonna add a couple nodes here. And if I had a raw file, I should be able to go in here and be able to manipulate metadata, but as you can see, it's not a raw file, so that is not there. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to uh, delog this to see how it looks. And I downloaded some uh, LUTs from the uh, Canon website. So I'm going to go in and do the log 3. And I'm going to do 709s and just choose the basic. And there it goes. Okay, so now I can go in here and I can just, I'll just do some real quick work on this. Okay, I'm going to bring down the highlights a little, drop this down a little. That looks good. A little contrast, a little saturate, just real quick. Take a little highlight off of our nose. And there you go. Got some really beautiful stuff. So there's your workflow going from the um, development kit from Canon and then taking it into Resolve. The advantage of this being that I did change my uh, white balance value and I was able to manipulate it as I do traditional raw files. I have resolved open up and what I'm going to do is uh, notice in my uh, up here in my uh, selection I have selected the original files that came off the CFast card. So if I take this and I put this into my media pool, notice immediately it registers as a Canon C200 RAW. Uh, that's fine, it's no problem bringing them in this way. I just won't have the flexibility that I had when I Put it through the uh, Canon utility. Let's go in and see what I mean here. I'm going to go and create a timeline, go over to my color tab, all right here we are in my uh, color tab. Now uh, if this was a traditional raw file I should be able to click on camera raw and I would be able to change these attributes. As you can see everything's grayed out. So the big difference here is that as long as uh, everything was done uh, on set correctly, uh, I have exposed it the way I like, the white balance is the way I like, no problem. Bring them on in and you can start working on them. However, if you want the flexibility of the uh, white balance of gaining up or down, 
then using the canning utility is really ideal before you bring it into Resolve. That wraps up my look at raw workflow for the Canon C200. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.